Russia during the 19th century was an anomaly in the European theater. By the early 20th century, Prussia had managed to unify Germany in the German Empire, with its Kaiser Wilhelm II at its head. Ingrained in Prussia's culture was undisguised militarism, including the collective urge to obey army officers. Prussia's militarism and its population's docility to the army stand central in today's story about a poor shoemaker, a petty criminal and a scam artist that happened to be born in Tilsit, a city in then Prussia. Thanks to a well-executed ruse, this man, Wilhelm Voigt, managed to impersonate a Prussian military captain, rally a troop of soldiers behind him, and pulled off an extraordinary heist near Berlin, which launched him to international fame. Friedrich Wilhelm Voigt was born in 1849 in Tilsit. Already at the age of 14, he was convicted of petty crime and served two weeks in prison. He was expelled from school following the conviction and took up an apprenticeship with his father, a cobbler. According to Christopher Clark, he was convicted six times for theft, robbery, and forgery, for which he received a prison term totaling 25 years. He was released in February 1906 and settled illegally near the Schlesiger Bahnhof railway station since Berlin authorities would not grant him a residence permit. He spent several months there as a night lodger, sharing his bed with factory workers at work night shifts. A bit over half a year after his release in October 1906, in Western Berlin, Voigt managed to purchase second-hand Prussian military uniform parts from multiple thrift stores. He eventually managed to assemble the uniform of a captain of the 1st Foot Guards Regiment. On the morning of October 16th, Voigt went to the Jungfernheide Park in Berlin and changed clothes into the captain's uniform. He then made his way to the local military barracks, where he encountered four soldiers and a non-commissioned officer that were on their way back from guard duty at the Plutzensee prison. The officer told his soldiers to stand to attention while Voigt explained to them that he was under direct orders from the king and had to take command of the unit. He dismissed the officer and took the four soldiers with him to the Putlitzstrasse station. On his way there, he managed to get another six on-duty soldiers from the nearby rifle range to join his group in order to carry out the supposed mission of the king. He led his troops into a train that was bound to Köpenick, a historic town to the southeast of Berlin. On their way, Voigt treated his men to beer and bought at the station. In Köpenick, the band of soldiers made their way to the council chambers. There, Voigt ordered his men to guard the main entrance, entering the building with the rest of his troops. They made their way to the suite administrative offices, the mayor's workplace. In there were Mayor Dr. Georg Langerhans and the city's most senior secretary, Rosenkranz. There, Voigt ordered the arrest of both men. Now, Mayor Langerhans himself had served in the Prussian military as a reserve lieutenant. As such, when he saw Voigt's epaulets displaying his rank, the mayor immediately stood up and did not even consider resisting the arrest. Both the mayor and his secretary were told they were to be escorted to Berlin. Voigt also reached the office of the council police inspector. The inspector was sleeping, after all, this was an incredibly quiet district, and it was a pleasant early autumn afternoon. Voigt reprimanded the inspector before making his way to the office of the municipal cashier, von Wildberg. Moving through the building, Voigt arrived at von Wildberg's office. He ordered him to open the municipality safe and give its entire contents to him. Wildberg willingly did so, not even considering resisting a captain. Voigt cashed in 4,000 marks and 17 pfenning, and in turn handed Wilberg an official receipt, supposedly. Having managed to grab all the money the municipality had, Voigt now ordered his men to take their prisoners to Berlin and report to a military command post there. He himself left as well, but disappeared on the way to Köpenick Station. Much later, Voigt told about what he did afterwards. He got rid of his military clothing, took another train to Berlin, and settled in a cafe across a military outpost, the Neue Wache, he ordered his men to take the prisoners to. There, he was drinking a beer as he watched the entire spectacle of confusion unfold in front of him. He then left the cafe and was on the run for six weeks before he got captured. 
He was arrested in December 1906 and received a prison sentence of four years. Within days, Voigt's exploits launched a real media spectacle. German newspapers wrote about the unheard of trickster's exploit and a robber still as adventurous and romantic as any novel. The crime was perceived to be genuinely funny and Voigt's motives were often elevated to him wanting to prove Prussian militarism was dangerous. Berlin newspapers described Voigt as cheeky, brazen, clever and ingenious. And for a while, everyone talked about it in taverns, on the street, and on trains. Postcards of the captain of Copernic were produced and sold with considerable success. International media too wrote about it. The Times reported that an event such as this could only happen in the militaristic German culture. Voigt rapidly became one of the most famous fables of modern Prussia. In 1931, Karl Zuckmeier, a German writer and playwright, created the stage play Hauptmann von Köpenick, which was later turned into a film, which I have used clips of during this video. Voigt himself was one of the beneficiaries of his crime as well. He served less than half of his sentence when the German Kaiser and Prussian King Wilhelm II ordered his release, granting him a royal pardon. Within a week, he was speaking to crowds in galleries and bars, reminiscing about his crime. Berlin authorities forbade him to make any such appearances, and that is when Voigt capitalized on his foreign fame. He made an incredibly successful tour to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, visiting Vienna and Budapest. He spoke at nightclubs, restaurants and fairs, talking about his adventure and selling postcards with his face on it. In 1910, he even left Europe to the United States and Canada. Apparently, even a wax statue of him was created in London's Madame Tussauds. In 1909, he published his memoirs, How I Became Captain of Copenhagen, which earned him enough money to buy a house in Luxembourg, where he settled permanently. He stayed there during the First World War, living relatively comfortably from his book sales and tours. Wilhelm Voigt passed away in January 1922 at the age of 72. He started as a petty thief, but due to his rather amusing crime, he ended up being an international celebrity for the later years of his life. I certainly think his story is worth telling and really enjoyed reading about him. And not just me, in 1996, the Copenhagen municipality even created a statue for him, which stands in front of the council house. Thank you very much for watching this video. If there's a topic or event you'd like to know more about, let me know your thoughts in a comment. I would also like to thank all my patrons for their generous support. If you enjoy House of History and want to support my work, consider checking me out on Patreon. For just $1 a month, you will already gain access to the exclusive Patreon series. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.